What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Now today, I'm actually going to be going over my draft that I did for the X9 Draft League, aka XDL. So yeah, I mean, spoilers, here's, here's everyone's draft, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about mine. Tier list is here. There were a lot of really, really hot takes, I think, on the tier list, but I think overall everything was very balanced. Uh, so yeah, basically how it worked is we had to draft um, these seven Pokemon first, two tier ones, two tier twos, two tier threes, and a tier four, any order we want. And then once those were drafted, you were able to make your free point picks. Now, usually in a draft league, it's going to be, you know, choose all of the Pokemon in any order you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you get rid of all these first or all these first, as long as you end up with the right things. However, they decided to make a rule where it's a little bit different. I didn't really mind it too much. It did throw off the draft a little bit for some players, but it was whatever in the grand scheme of things since everyone was like an, on an equal playing field. We None of us really expected it, but it's whatever. So yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and go through my picks. I think my initial draft was kind of weak, uh, and I'll go over why that is. However, I did make some adjustments that should be going through before week one, according to the rules. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Also, Team Chicago Black Flock merch available. <laughs> So my round one pick, uh, my tier one, I ended up just drafting in order of tiers because it ended up being the optimal way for me. Uh, my tier one pick round one was Dusclops. And the reason I picked Dusclops is just because Frisk and the viability of this Pokemon makes it really good. Uh, I was talking to Jin <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm so glad I got Dusclops. And he's like, man, Dusclops doesn't have anything on P2. And honestly, kind of has a point when it comes to recovery. Like, yeah, I'm going to have to run like paints, but if I want recovery... But the thing is, Frisk in Draft League, you I cannot I cannot overstate how important Frisk is. So in Draft League, if you're not familiar, uh, because you're literally just prepping for other teams. If I were to go over here, like you know, I go to this team. Oh, I'm gonna face off against. Uh, let, let's say I'm facing off against Viz this week, right? I see exactly what his team is, and I build specifically for him. That sort of allows you to run some crazy stuff. Like if I want to run like a weakness policy Verizion, or if I want to run like a Koba Berry Verizion, I'm going to do that. There are, there are like optimal ways to run your team that allow you to get away with shenanigans. And with those amount of shenanigans, being able to see items just exposes it immediately. And that's huge, especially on lead with such a bulky and reliable Pokemon like Dusclops. I, I think it's such a good pick for round one. Uh, Dusclops being able to be a Pokemon to activate weakness policies with stuff like Shadow Sneak, Bulldoze, Set Up Trick Rooms, Haze, Pain Split, Will-O-Wisp. It has so many tools at its disposal. I think it's a great mod. I don't think I've ever, I'm ever going to use uh, Ally Switch unless my matchup is just that bad, but <laughs> it's pretty useful. You know, like Gravity, Helping Hand. There's a lot of things you can do. Eviolite, it's a great mod. So yeah, I think that was a really good value for round one. Like, there were a couple of things I was considering, but most of my drafts began with me getting Dusclops round one. Um, yeah, like, honestly, I think it was a good pick. My round two pick, which was a bit controversial, was Colossal. It was another it was another tier one. And some people will say, yeah, Colossal is a really one-dimensional Pokemon, but I think that what you can do is run Colossal in a non-linear fashion. You don't always have to go for Steam Engine proc weakness policy. It's a fast enough Pokemon where you can do literally a middling speed tier with weakness policy and run like Trick Room Bulldoze on your Dusclops while also still having like Sash Surf on your on your Sneasel, right? Spoilers, I have a Sneasel. Um, but with Colossal, it's, it's a really, really powerful Pokemon that uh, is able to hit times four speed after activating a weakness policy. And because it's so slow, if you were to bulldoze it, even with like max speed investment, even though you don't need max speed investment in the draft league, it's even cooler because you can literally just say, hey, I don't need to outspeed a Regieleki. I just have to outspeed a Kingdra this week. And you calc for that specifically, allowing you to have a ton more bulk. Fun fact, if you want to outspeed a Cinderace with Colossal, there you go. Just, just hit it with a steam engine and then you outspeed. So you can just like do that or you know, it's it's a really cool Pokemon. Uh, Colossal is really solid because with only a limited amount of water types running around the format, it's very hard to one shot this thing. Limited amount of ground types running around per team. There's only one Tapu Fini. And as we all know, Tapu Fini is like the ultimate Colossal answer if you have screens and stuff. So yeah, uh, so yeah Colossal, I think was a really good value pick. We all know GMAX Volcalith is a busted move. Um, and not many teams have like multiple rock types. And I think certain teams don't have any rock types. Let me look at this. No, 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 no. Yeah, no rock type there. Uh, no rock type there. 
<laughs> so most teams, there's a rock type there. Uh, there is a rock type here. There is a, there is no rock type here. Most teams, I'm gonna be able to hit everything on the team with the with the rock. So I think that's a really solid thing. Uh, there are very few good rock types in the format and Colossal is one of them. So yeah, uh, something to note is Colossal, you know, Steam Engine's great, but it is possible for some Pokemon to outrun it with like abilities and stuff. Uh, and something that I wanted to do is I was eventually planning on getting Regigigas, but I wasn't able to pull the trigger fast enough. So I have a Weezing Galar here. And while Weezing Galar is like a really good Pokemon next to Regigigas and like Archeops or whatever you want to run next to it, being able just to turn off other Pokemon's abilities is such a valuable tool. If I'm facing off against a Durant, guess what? No Hustle. If I'm, if I'm facing off against uh, a Venusaur, no Chlorophyll. Uh, Charizard, no Solar Power. Uh, you know, Torkoal, anything, I turn off all of their abilities and it just becomes such a useful Pokemon. It's really good if I have something like Virizion here and I'm facing off against a Swift Swimmer. I can literally just switch in the the uh, the Weezing and now my Virizion's gonna outspeed it. So that's that's huge. Uh, I think that Weezing Galar is solid too because I didn't have a Fairy type on my team and I didn't see myself getting a Tapu. I did have access to like Misty Surge if I needed it for a particular matchup, but I'm 90% sure most of the time I'm gonna be rocking Neutralizing Gas. So yeah. Uh, it has some pretty good utility to Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split, uh, Sludge Bomb. It has access to Strange Steam, which is an exclusive move that has a 20% chance to confuse the target and has a really solid base power. It's only a little bit weaker than Moonblast. So yeah, I think it's good Pokemon. Uh, fire coverage is great. Taunt is great. I like it a lot. And there are a lot of shenanigans I can pull off with it versus opposing teams, especially the weather-based teams. This guy's going to be like a must-have. My next pick was a Tier 2. I needed a way to activate this thing, uh, and with a budget, you know, with Colossal, I needed some way to activate it, and with a budget Mon like Sneasel uh, available, I was able to make a pretty smart decision there, I think. Sneasel having 115 base speed means that I'm going to be outspeeding most of the format, uh, and being a dark type means I have access to moves like Beat Up to activate like Virizion if I need. I have Fake Out, I have Surf, Triple Axle is going to be great for facing down against the few ground types in the format that would step to Colossal, uh, so yeah. Inner Focus is great, can't be flinched, can't be intimidated. It's just an overall good Pokemon in draft. I like it a lot. Taunt, a lot of good tools. So yeah, Virizion more or less is just going to be, you know, budget justified Mon. One of the better grass types that you can get. A pretty good Dynamax option with the fact that it has bounce. Uh, and it also gives me a couple more things that I have that I can do with this team. I don't always have to bring Colossal every week, but it's probably going to show up to a lot of matchups. So yeah. Uh, being able to deal with the water types that would likely come to the Colossal matchup is huge. And on top of that, if I'm not bringing Colossal, I can focus around Virizion just to deal with those water mons and the grass mons, or in the, in the ground mons that, uh, want to check the Colossal. So I like it quite a bit. It's also a pretty good budget, uh, fighting type, uh, and has some pretty decent tools at its disposal. So yeah, I think it's a good mon. It also has coaching if I want to do something crazy like that, but yeah. Something to note is... Most of my team is pretty fast here. You might not think about it being fast, but the fact that it's just colossal with some support mons means it's going to be a pretty fast team with a Trick Room option. I decided I wanted a stronger Trick Room uh, option, so I went with Reuniclus. It was a really solid uh, tier 3 mon, uh, and the fact that it has access to Overcoat to prevent sleep and stuff, Regenerator, Magic Guard, there's a lot of cool things I can do with it. I could run a Life Orb and just absolutely hide that from the opponent since there are no other Dust Cops running around. There are very few Frisk mons. So with Life Orb, I and uh, Magic Art, I don't take any Life Orb damage, which means I can run something like Expanding Force on my Reuniclus and go for like Trick Room, Max Psychic a few times, deal a ton of damage, more so than people expect, and then click Expanding Force and deal a lot under Trick Room. I also have the option of activating a Weakness Policy with like Shadow Sneak Dust Clops. Um, it does have Ally Switch, you know, that is an option. I'm gonna keep, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna keep putting that thing on the table and then being like, hey guys, I have it, be careful. I'm not gonna use it, but. Yeah, uh, Recover isn't really something I intend to use, but it could be useful. Trick Room on, has access to electric coverage, has some pretty fun support moves too. Gravity, Helping Hand. Uh, yeah, overall pretty good Pokemon. I did not know it got Infestation. That's kind of interesting. Next up, I went with Glycopod, another budget activator for uh, Colossal. And something to note is with Pokemon like Glacier and Metagross running around on opposing teams, those Pokemon under Trick Room can deal with Colossal really, really well, especially if they're running a super, super Assault Vest uh, version of Metagross to deal with my Colossal, since uh, when Dynamax, they can sometimes take that hit. 
Uh, what I can actually do is bring a Golisopod as a catch-all to most of the mons that would deal with Colossal. And the fact that I have Neutralizing Gas means that I actually have an option of making this like a Dynamax mon. <laughs> See, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, also, you know, Aqua Jet mon, Wide Guard to block Earthquakes. Uh, hard Walling, most of the mons that deal with Colossal is really big, of course. Uh, it does have Taunt, it does have offensive moves, but I think most of the time I'm just going to be running like, you know, First Impression, Wide Guard, Aqua Jet, Liquidation, stuff like that. So... I think it's just an okay mon that I had the option of running with a Weezing on my team. Now, this Drake Assault was originally a Thunderous um, Incarnate, or Thunderous Therian. And what happened is I was originally going to choose Tapu Lele and Thievil as some of my free agents since I wanted Kingdra. I wanted to go with a Rain option, so I had Colossal or Rain, which would have made this team absolutely terrifying because I wanted to get Kingdra and Pelipper. Because with Kingdra and Pelipper, now I just have two really strong hyper offensive modes that people have to deal with. So uh, Thunderous was just a panic pick because I was running out of time. So I just grabbed it. In the end, you know, I immediately swapped it out for Drake Uh And that was actually after I had picked up Talonflame as a 100 point free agent. I believe this guy. Oh, no, this guy's 75 points, right? Yeah, this guy was 75 points. And this guy was 75 points. So with Talonflame and Dracozult, I actually have a pretty synergistic pair. There aren't very many Prankster Tailwind Mons uh, that were left. I believe there were none left, in fact, unless I wanted to go with Cottony. However, having access to Gale Wings is pretty big, especially with an option of blocking Fake Out with Quick Guard. Um, if, I, if I turn off abilities, I can actually outpace Swift Swim Mons just naturally. So uh, Chlorophyll Mons as well. This guy's got Taunt, Will-O-Wisp. There's a lot of good support options. Mainly, this is going to be a Tailwinder, though. Uh, so, yeah, Talonflame, a really good Pokemon in draft. You have a lot of options you can run with it. Of course, you know, I do have Hustle Drake Azult here, and I'm probably just going to go ahead and run it most weeks with, like, Talonflame next to it. We can just do, like, Life Orb, Aerial Lace, uh, High Horsepower. Of course, Bolt Beak is a really good option. And once again, it's something to threaten those water types that want to come to the Colossal matchup. So, yeah, I think it's a great mon. I like it quite a bit, and I think it was a really solid choice when it comes to swapping out the uh, the Electrotype I had on the team. Uh, so yeah, I like it. Next up, we have Cradily. I actually was considering swapping this out for Gastrodon since I can afford to do that, uh, but I think Cradily might be better for the first couple of weeks, so I'm going to hold on to it for a little longer. Being able to redirect those water moves away from Colossal is really nice. I also have another Rock type on the team as well as a, another Ground type, or another um, Grass type. Uh, on top of that, it's a really bulky special defensive mon, which is something the team was lacking before. I'm very physically defensive, uh, and I lacked special defense, so having that is really nice. Uh, it has some pretty decent coverage moves. I can run like Earth Power, Giga Drain, Meteor Beam. Has some pretty interesting support tech like Gastro Acid, I guess. Turn off abilities, even though I have that option already with Weezing. Yeah, I think it's just a good Pokemon to have. Uh, I could do a couple of things with it, but it's probably just going to be Storm Drain. Next up, this guy was originally channel mascot, friend of the channel, Thievil. But like I said, uh, I didn't get Tapu Lele, and I'm probably not going to run Misty Seed Thievil next to uh, a Weezing, as heat as that would be. So what I realized is that this team needs one last little nuisance support mod if I can't get my hands on like an Umburdened Thievil. So what I decided to do is I went digging, I'm like... I can't afford Sableye. Sableye's gone. I can't afford Whimsicott. Whimsicott's gone too. All these Prankster mods are gone. Grimmsnarl's gone. And then it hit me. Morigrim still has access to Prankster. And I can put an Eevee Light on it. And it's actually decently defensive. And it has access to most of the moves that Grimmsnarl would have. The only thing is I have to run Thunder Wave over Scary Face, which isn't the biggest deal. It's, it's whatever, but it's still like a good Pokemon. Sucker Punch is still an option. I still have Spirit Break. No, I don't have Spirit Break. Uh, but, you know, I, I still have good moves. Like, it's it's a really solid option. I still have Fake Out, Burning Jealousy. I, there's a lot of things I can do with this. I can Swagger. If I want to run, like, a Lumberry Swagger, that's a thing I can do. So, yeah, I think that that was, like, a really smart trade on my half, or on my on my part, just because it was, like, it isn't even on the draft sheet. Morgrim literally isn't on the draft sheet because it's, like, technically a, a not fully evolved bond, but the rules say not fully evolved bonds are worth 25 points. So I'm like, oh, my God, I can trade out... Thievul for Morgrim. So yeah, this is currently the state of our team. I think it's going to stay like this for a while. I'll make some trades if it ends up not being that great. Uh, but this is the Chicago Black Flock for the XDL. I hope you guys enjoy uh, watching the content the next coming weeks. So yeah, week one is going to be against Pokemon Cast, so I'm excited for that. 
Let me know what you guys think about the team in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.